follow-up uh, small training video to go along with our center hard metal 3d printer filament and this is for the folks who this is entirely new uh, the fact that after you make your 3d part that you're going to have to debind and center it and what we are here in this kind of cramped space is in front of a very uh, high-tech vacuum centering furnace this furnace will uh, have most of the features you're going to want to uh, have in your furnace but uh, you, you'll either go from a tabletop to a much bigger system we're going to start with a small one uh, the modules of a furnace are somewhat different or at least uh, the language of it may be different you have a vacuum chamber and the vacuum chamber can be square as this one is it can be this is a front loading chamber it can be round it can be a top loading chamber it can be a clamshell type chamber or it can be a bottom loading chamber after you have a vacuum chamber and in the temperatures we're going to go to most of them are going to be double wall water cooled systems and we're going to show you schematics of these in conjunction with this video uh, you're going to have a hot zone and I'll show you the hot zone in a minute you're going to have a vacuum pumping system you're going to have a control panel and a power supply all of that is present here and you're going to have a, a method of removing the binder the thermoplastic resin and in this furnace we're doing it via hydrogen burn-off now if you can see what I'm going to do here this system has a tungsten mesh heating element uh, this will go to approximately 2200 degrees centigrade you can have graphite or you can have uh, refractory metal lower temperatures can have molybdenum or graphite uh, and other materials and we'll list these materials in the addendum and in the written material on our website now this is a power feed through going through vacuum bringing power to the heating element the heating element in this case is low voltage because in vacuum Poshum's law requires that you do not arc or you will arc in vacuum if you put high voltage meaning you can't have 110 or 220 or 440 otherwise you'll arc so generally you can have DC or you can have um, say 2 to 20 30 40 volts on the secondary of your power supply you, you, when that happens of course these power feed tubes they're protected but they won't electrocute you now you're going to have to measure temperature and this can be measured temperature either uh, through an optical pyrometer right here or via thermocouples here we have two thermocouples where my two fingers are and one is for the process control thermocouple and the other is for safety over temperature you don't want thermal runaway so you have two two thermocouples one to measure your control and your process the other to prevent uh, as a safety measure you have a vacuum pumping system and here a little difficult to see but we have a, a high vacuum pumping system as well as a rough vacuum pumping system uh, and we have in a power supply uh, module which is to con pro to provide power to the heating elements here we have water cool power feeds and we have a control panel in this control panel we will have a safety uh, safety over temperature uh, controller this will prevent thermal runaway we have a process controller that will allow us to ramp and uh, soak out the temperatures and allow us to control partial pressure we have our ammeters and our voltmeters for our power supply here many times the power supply is separate uh, standalone power supply we have vacuum gauges and in this case we're going to measure uh, not only vacuum and a dial temperature a dial vacuum gauge we'll also have a thermocouple vacuum gauge and an ion vacuum gauge because this has actually this system has three vacuum pumps on it a rough vacuum pump a diffusion pump and a uh, holding pump and this particular high vacuum uh, 
gauge controller will also automatically operate the vacuum valves to allow it to automatically uh, sequence and control partial pressure. Now all of these other indicator lights allow you also to operate the furnace manually and they will tell you what, what is operating, what's not operating, what valves are open, what valves are closed. Um, and we have a hydrogen burn-off system. In some of the thermoplastics, we do not want to recover them and we'll burn them off to CO2 and water. Others will trap them and have uh, a, a cold trap before the vacuum pumps and the cold trap will trap the thermoplastic and will allow us to recycle it in the system. So this is a, a not simple but a very sophisticated vacuum furnace that uh, has been around for a long time for these exotic metals and materials that we're going to use, high temperature sinter ceramics, non-oxide ceramics, the titanium metals, uh, the high alloys, uh, tungsten, tantalum uh, and uh, molybdenum and uh, the alloy steels and the stainless but this everything we have here is fundamentally follows the modules of a furnace and those modules uh, we're now going to show you in uh, schematics and other schematics as we go along.